Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi, and welcome back at the museum. Today we're going to talk about hats. Hats replacement on any first generation DCC recorder. This is a follow-up video on last week's video on the Moran's DD82 where we replaced the hat. But today we're going to talk specifically on how you can do that with any first generation recorder. Even Philips didn't replace any hats on their recorders. They just replaced the entire mechanism with the Reed write board. But thanks to Benoit de Conto and also previous help in older videos from Jonathan Dupre, we were able to successfully match a hat from a different player to a read write board by making the adjustment based on calculations that Benoit had done. In this video, we're going to show you how this can be done. During the premiere of our documentary in 2019, we were so grateful to unexpectedly receive gifts from former Philips employees. Like an original wafer, a tie clip with a DCC hat embedded, and of course a box full of new old stock DCC hats that we now have mostly used to restore players. The Philips service manual does not give you exact details other than that special tools are needed to adjust the read-write board with the new hat. It all starts with the number written on the hat. This is the unique current needed for the hat to work correctly and record. So why does the read-write board or hat malfunction on all first generation players like the Philips 900, Moran's DD82 and DD92, Technics and Panasonic DC10 and Optimus 2000? The leaking SMD capacitors can damage the read and write amplifiers TDA 1316 and 1317 or the entire board by eating the copper traces and putting a much higher voltage directly to the hat, making it unusable. Most of the time either the board or the head survives, so you potentially can build a new mechanism from two broken players, which is exactly what we will do in this video. First you can check if the head is ok, followed by checking the TDAs. From the service manual we know that pin 13 is the common, pin 3 the auxiliary, and pin 5, 7, 9, 11, 15, 17, 19 and 21 are for playback. Make sure you are ESD protected before measuring the head. All pins should measure approximately the same. Pins 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 and 20 are the digital recording heads and can be measured the same way. Here is a different hat where most of the tracks are no longer working. Check the TDA1317 by measuring between the VSS and these pins using the voltmeter in both directions. The 1317 is used for playback. And again, now an example of a non-working TDA 1317. The TDA 1316 is for recording. Use the voltmeter between these pins in both directions. And now a non-working TDA1316.
Looking at the read-write board located directly behind the head in the mechanism, there are usually six adjustable resistors. Digital BIOS R117 has been mostly replaced by a fixed resistor. R110 and 109 are for analog BIOS. You can adjust this with any analog test tape. R102 and 101 are for analog feedback shown in the view meter. R135 digital output RD MUX should be fine, but can be adjusted in the service mode if dropouts still occur. The main focus today is on R167 and the iRack adjust together with jumper 152 and 151 to adjust the new head to this read-write board. So here is where the theory to praxis from Benoit comes in. The current written on the head in this example is 165 milliamps. In the service manual it is mentioned that there is a constant of 12 ohms between J152 and 151. When in recording the voltage measured between those two points was 1.415 volts. Calculating the current would result in 117.92 milliamps, a difference of around 47 milliamps. In Benoit's theory, the 45 to 50 milliamps would be a constant, so he started the database and using it in other players successfully. So we tested this on a Technics RSDC10 that would not record. The value on the ribbon was 173 milliamps. Given the fact that the 12 ohms were a constant, we were able to calculate a voltage of 1.512 volts. The head in this Technics was new and the read-write board was original. The danger of using too much current is that the recording will be too deep and can only be erased in this player or could potentially harm the tape. If you are not using enough current, all the recordings can be erased and you might only be able to record on a brand new tape. The mechanism has to come out of the player so you have access to R167. And you would have to be in recording mode to be able to make the adjustment. Time for a test recording. And indeed, now the recording works beautifully. We hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.